What's up guys, it's Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to the channel. Make sure uh, you hit that subscribe button for future content to make sure you know when new stuff is getting uploaded as we get ready for another episode of Fatal 12. In the last episode, the second elimination occurred, leaving us with just 10 people left. We have a lot of theories on what could happen, and all, but a lot more questions on what is going on. We've learned that in the trial process... Um, you know, you feel the pain of the person you've eliminated's death. Um, so that brings up a lot of questions as well as uh, a number of questions that I've been asking throughout this series. Make sure you go back and watch that episode and the previous ones if you have not seen them already. Um, as you will be pretty lost as to where we're at right now. So Frederico just heard the explanation on what happened at the trial. And um, this is what he has to say. Man, that's freaky. That Parker girl is cruel despite appearances. You think? I found the whole thing pretty exciting. In response, I make sure to sigh loudly enough for her to hear it. She keeps babbling on with a, without a care in the world, though. More importantly, we're heading to Japan next, it figures. Might as... Pardon, jeez. Might as well, considering we'll need to get there at some point. It's especially good time now. What with the new card you got belonging to a Japanese guy and all. A super old guy at that. Yep, let's head out and we finish this grub. It finally feels like our second round's over, now that we've decided on what our next move is going to be. Washing down the last flasky bis bits of my croissant and with some milk, I stand up... Oh, milk. Great choice, Frederico. Stand up with, uh, and get ready to leave. So they're headed to Japan, which kind of is bad news for our main character. I'm kind of... I'm kind of confused on what's going to uh, happen next. I got to say that, you know, this is this is kind of wild. And then we have Rinka. Oh, man. Rinka's got to be feeling it right now. Hold up a second. Shut the fuck up, dogs! Jesus Christ. Huff, huff. This morning brings memories from another nightmare with it. The second round of Divine Selection has taken place. By this point, I've already accepted that I'm a participant. The fact that I'm alive right now makes it hard to comprehend the reality of my own death, but it's no longer about whether or not I believe it. Rather, the events that have taken place so far are starting to get me, get to me because they feel so detached from my own personal life. Divine Selection is gliding along and two people have been eliminated without any influence from me whatsoever. I keep telling myself that they had died over two weeks ago, but I can't forget the faces I saw in the Court of Fate. That alone is enough for, to make my heart ache. I don't want to die. Not having access to my own cards is frustrating, too. There's one major reason behind my reluctance regarding all of this. It's the fact that I don't know what my own regret is. That is a good point. I mean, you don't even know what you're... I mean, you don't even know... The entirety of the events that transpired you can tell because you don't remember the chick that was standing right there in the court with you number four which you have her card technically it looks like from from what we have here if we go to the the uh card book she doesn't have her own cause of death card either she only has fire for number four which is um the chick that it caused the explosion in the first place i still haven't sorted things out with miharu but it's entirely it's entirely possible that we both we could both be eliminated while preoccupied with that. As afraid as I am of both the women from last night and the guy from the first round, not to mention everyone else, I'm not about to go down without a fight. First and foremost, my first and foremost priority. I have three cards at the moment. If I'm going to do any digging, it needs to start with the people these belong to. I look up that Frederico. Carminati person after I finished collecting my thoughts. As expected, no useful information. All I learned is that it's a common name in Italy. The other two cards provided to me with a cause of death for number four and a regret for number nine. All I know about them is they seem to be foreigners. Where am I even meant to start? After a big sigh, I set my morning I set my morning routine. There's always the possibility the other participants don't know anything about me. Doesn't mean I can't wait. I can waste my time though. My own name card was among the dis those distributed at the beginning, which means it's only a matter of time until someone puts two and two together. 
Only thing that has me curious is number four's cause of death. Much like me, their car's card says they died in a fire. From what I recall, number four is a boy from abroad. But she called them both girls. Of course, there's no guarantee he got caught up in the very same situation as me. Which he did. He caused it. Much like how there's no guarantee, I simply died from the fire itself. Exactly. See, that's the thing that I'm saying also, is that she doesn't have her own death card. She knows that she was involved in a fire because of the flashback, but she doesn't know whether or not that was the cause of her death. In fact, I still don't recall how one broke out on the train in the first place. There are plenty of possibilities, from simple accident to an intentional ter terrorist attack. But there's no way to find out when the axe has, already, has been undone. In other words, all I've got going for me is my memory. Screw this. There's no point in forcing myself to try and remember, especially when there's a near zero chance of a hint magically appearing to help me out. I make my way downstairs, have some br pardon, bread, and help head to school. God, she is in such a bad spot. Like, it's really bad. Phew, lunchtime at last. Did you bring your own? Mao and Miharu stroll over to my seat with, when the bell chimes for lunch. I had planned on going to the cafeteria on my own, but Mao catches me just in time. We probably could have eaten separately if she hadn't, cons considering my mind is a little preoccupied. So much for trying to go about life as usual. Yeah, I was just about to head over to the cafeteria. Actually, I overslept a bit this morning. Do I have some time to make my own lunch? Overslept, huh? Obviously, I won't ask if it's thanks to being in the dream world. It sure is rare for you to oversleep. Either way, full speed ahead to the cafeteria. The university on campus has its own cafeteria, which is open for our use as well. Middle schoolers aren't allowed to use it, but once you hit high school, it's fair game. It's probably because you have to pay to go to high school um, in Japan. At least most high schools, I think. I don't, again, I'm not like an expert or anything, but I'm like 90% sure most high schools you have to pay to get in. <laughs> Since it's a little awkward hanging around all the university students, most of us tend to buy our food and then go sit elsewhere. That goes double for us, considering how much we stand out. That being the case, we make our way to the rooftop after getting our food. Oh, we've got it all to ourselves today. The rooftop is usually crowded with students on days like this, but fortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case today. What'd you two get? Hmm, a hand sandwich. It seems simple, but it does get the jobs on. Not to mention nice and cheap. Are you, you sure that's gonna be enough? I could ask you the same thing. Yakisoba bread and, and anpan isn't much more filling than what I have. Hey now, I got some coffee milk as well, and so in terms of calories, I'm miles ahead of you. <laughs> she jams a straw in the carton with a triumphant grin. It's a 16-ounce carton too. It probably, st I'd probably struggle to finish it before lunchtime ends. Yo, <laughs> why are we using ounces? Seriously, what, what is this, America? Use freaking milliliters. Or liters, or freaking not grams. Grams, right? Don't use ounces to pounds, man. A 16 ounce carton is a pound. You could just say it's a one pound carton, too. I don't get it. Why is calorie counting a competition now? Uh, to see who gains weight the fastest? I, I don't think that's just how calorie count works. Please find something better to compete in. It wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to put a little more put on a little more weight. I'd appreciate you not saying such things like while ogling my ch Wow, what a dick! Come on! Why would you say that? Rika's not even half bad. I mean not she's not Miharu, but I mean none of us can be Miharu. Miharu's just freaking angel look at her she's amazing yowza <laughs> much as I uh, much as as I am aware of my depressing reality I'd rather not have her remind me of it especially with Miharu sitting right beside me hmm why is she wait why is she so why is she so concerned over Miharu hearing it hmm 
What did you get, Rinka? A tonkatsu sandwich. Well, we've got our winner. You're on the prowl for calories too, eh? I'm certainly not competing over it. Mao asked for a bite and I unwrapped the packaging. Trust her to do so before I can get a bite in myself. I float the sandwich close to her mouth, which prompts her to chop down on it. Ah, oh, I didn't get any of the tonkatsu from that bite. You really do take small bites, don't you? What's wrong, Miharu? She's staring at Mao with a blank expression. Well, maybe she wants a bite too. Um, want to trade for your hand sandwich? I'll give you the part Mao didn't take a bite out of. No, it's fine. I don't particularly like fried food in the first place. Please accept my humble apologies. Mao presents her yakisoba bread as an offering to Miharu after apologizing. Unsurprisingly, Miharu turns her down, which elicits a laugh from her. Honestly, what a silly conversation. At the same time, it serves to remind me that moments like this are a regular part of my daily life. <sighs> Rinka. What's up? Oh, sorry, I just spaced out for the second. That said, I can go back to eating my lunch. We kept chatting like usual on the rooftop, just like until just before le lunchtime ends. After the final period of the day, I hear someone call out to me as I'm tidying up my desk. Rinka. Oh, hey, Naomi. Turns out to be Naomi. The culture festival isn't far off at this point, so it's about time she starts teaching her classmates how to brew the coffee themselves. That's why she's, why we've made a deal to have her come over to Lion House as much as possible this week. She normally waits for me at the gate, so it's kind of surprising to see her come straight to my classroom. Now that I think about it, we'll get, well, everything I'm teaching Naomi right now be undone if I get eliminated. Oh, that would be, she would kill everything, wouldn't she? Based on what Parker said, it's all but guaranteed. If that's true, why am I even bothering? Yeah, that's what I'd be thinking too, is I'd be like, well, I'm gonna eliminate it at some point, I just know it. Is something wrong? No, it's nothing. I can't keep acting like this. Mal caught me spacing out earlier today too. Sorry for the wait, let's go. Rinka. Miharu stops me as I'm standing up. Hmm? What's up? Are you going home with her? Yep, she'll be practicing her brewing skills again today. Do you want to join? Assuming you're free, of course. Not like there'll be many customers in the first place, and I'm all for us hanging out together. At first she looks happy about the offer, but she quickly shifts to disappointment. As much as I'd love to, I have work today. But I might be able to get someone to fill in for me if I ask right now. She whips out her phone to check it in mid-sentence. Yes! You come, Miharu! I might as well get some romance in before either one of us or both of us die. No need to cancel work for this. All we do is chat anyway, so let's do it another time. Yeah, that sounds good. No take-backs, okay? Her tone is a bit... poignant. Not that I blame her, it's entirely possible one of us could get eliminated during the next round. I leave the classroom after saying goodbye to Miharu. I'm sure Mao would have tagged along, but it seems like she's busy with something else today as well. While on her way home to Lion House, Naomi blurts out something I don't expect. I should probably apologize to her later. To Miharu? Why? Well, it seemed like she wanted to talk to you about something in private. Well, I wish she could have... I wish she could have come, but it's not. there's not much I can, you can do about her having to go to work. Don't blame yourself. That's not quite, I, quite what I meant, though. So, what made you come meet me in the classroom today? I figured it'd be best to meet you as soon as possible, but I'll make sure to wait for you by the gate from tomorrow on. What? what why? Naomi struggles to find the words to answer my question. After a number of false starts, she simply tells me, Never mind. It's worth noting that she actually seems a bit agitated. A rarity for her. Hmm. Is there kind of like a love triangle going on? Is that what it is? Unbeknownst to both Rinka and Naomi, there's a girl secretly watching them from the school gate. 
It was Mishima Miharu. Oh, did I make the wrong choice? Please don't be evil, Miharu. <laughs> Known at Emeka High for her looks and ad admission via scholarship. To many, she is the embodiment of perfection. However, this perception has made her somewhat difficult to approach for them. Especially now, as teams streak down her cheeks for all to see. A scenario likely to become the locus of many rumors if it involves anyone other than Miharu. In fact, it is such an unusual sight that no one will dare mention it at all. Yo, Miharu. Didn't think you'd still be here. Amongst the crowd of students pretending they hadn't seen anything. Oguma N Mao is the one to address her. Her attitude seems consistent, even in the presence of her friend crying without uttering a word. Miharu's focus never shifts, despite Mao's presence. As such, Mao follows her line of sight, only to give a st sage nod after seeing the two figures it led to. So that's what it is. Hey, Mao. What? If I were to die, I'd want it to be from... Uh, from having earned Rinka's love. I knew it! Oh my god, did I make the wrong choice though? I offered to invite her. I, I, I invited her to come with us. I I thought that was the right choice. I need, I need this to happen. Why is she not... What? Her voice quivers as she says this to Mao. Her words lack even the slightest hint of exaggeration. Mao is well aware that she has simply let her true feelings slip out. Miharu's words fail to face her. She responds as she always does. Well, guess you can't die just yet. She opts not to wait for Miharu's reply and walks off. And not because she doesn't care. She understands that Miharu sees no merit in sitting down to hash things out. Or go and sing karaoke to sh shout those inner feelings out loud. Instead, she leaves Miharu to digest those simple words. Miharu doesn't think of Mao as being cold for doing so either. In fact, she feels absolutely nothing ab at all about her. The only thing in her heart is Rinka, who gradually sinks to the horizon. I thought I made the right choice! Ah. I feel bad. Could I have changed that? I don't want- I don't want her staying like this. I want those two to get together. I'm rooting for Miharu. I wonder if Naomi's also an option. I'm just not as big of a fan of Naomi, to be honest. Maybe it's because Naomi's more of a me character and Miharu's more of a character that like... Well, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain because Miharu is also a character that I kind of ex aspire to be like um, as a person totally. Um, at least from what I have gathered in terms of information about it so far. Obviously, we don't know a whole hell of a lot about Miharu, apparently not even her real name, but I really, really like Miharu. Hello? You realize no one else works here, right? Naomi drops her things off at the counter before don donning the apron she's brought from home. I fill in regulars about the cultural festival and tell them not to worry about Naomi's presence. In exchange for my teaching her, she offered to help out with dishwashing and other simple tasks for around an hour or so. I've told her not to bother, but she insists on it. It's gotten to the point where it'd feel ru rude to keep turning her down, so we've decided on a time for her to help me out. Here's how things typically go when Naomi's around. We open at 4 p- Pardon. Jeez, what a... We open at 4 p.m. on the weekdays, and, an hour, and the hour or so after that, it's either completely dead or we have very few customers inside. That's when we either brew some coffee together or she reads up on different types of coffee beans. The latter is more out of personal interest than anything else, since it won't come in handy for the cultural festival. Around 6 p.m., the regulars who are just finishing up work start dropping by, and that's when I have to help have her help out for an hour. Afterwards, she kills some time either studying or reading books. Sometimes we chat when I've got the time, too. That's how things went last week, anyway. Right, let's get started. Um, can I show you something first? She takes something out of her bag, and I nod. It's a transparent plastic bag. Inside are a number of cookies, made in shapes of stars and hearts. Oh, these are cute! They're, um, my way of saying thanks. I made them at home yesterday. I untie the red ribbon as she hands me the bag. A smell 
A sweet smell wafts through the room as soon as I do. Would you like to have some together after we brew coffee? Assuming you're fine with sweet things, of course. Uh, I'd love to, thanks. I tie the bag up to prevent the cookies from being splashed with the water we're, while we're brewing. <laughs> I made sure to use your favorite color for the ribbon. How'd you know that? Well, I actually thought... You actually thought I wouldn't have known? Leaving the cookies somewhere visible, I start the brewing process. Yep, you've got this d down pretty well now. You should be able to teach the others no problem. No way. I've... I'd much rather practice some more. This is... This may be a method for beginners, but... We know how clumsy I can be. She can act as humble as she wants, but the fact that... But it's a fact that she's improving. I'm rather impressed by how she manages it as when she's properly focused. I wouldn't be surprised if she shot right ahead of me. If it were my grand teaching her. It feels like a good time for a break. I've been looking forward to those cookies of yours. It's the same picture. I love I love how she looks in this picture. But it also seems like she just woke up. And she's like completely lost in thought. And she's just kind of sitting there with the coffee and the, the little cookies. And you're just... Hmm. And there are hairs everywhere. We have no customers right now, so it's a perfect moment to take a break. Can't say for sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though. I place the cookies onto a plate and carry them over to our usual seats along with some coffee. After appreciating how great they look, I finally take a bite. Someone hits Naomi's panic button as she awaits my reaction. These are great! I'm not good at making dramatic reactions, so this is the best I can do. <laughs> Naomi's eyes shimmer with excitement that matches her beaming smile. What a relief. I have a sip of my coffee before taking another bite. Oh, actually, is something the matter? She looks like her s smile is so sad. This... These pair with coffee quite well, don't they? I'm struggling to find a reason why, though. Yes, I made them with extra butter so they would complement the bitter coffee you make. She lets out a sigh of relief, brushing her hand down to her chest. I'm so glad you liked them. There's no way I wouldn't when you went and made them for me. There are, f there are a few too many for me to eat alone, so we end up eating them together. Baking sweets is apparently one of her favorite pastimes, so... She can bake a whole bunch of things, but cookies seem to be her specialty. It reminds me that my gran used to bake cookies as well. Granted, the taste was completely different from these. These are simple and mellow, much like Naomi. But at the time, they don't feel as if they were made by someone not used to baking. An idea hits me once we're about halfway through the plate. Would you mind teaching me how to bake these? Our custom... Oh, her expression changed. Would you look at that? Our customer is probably would probably be thrilled to see more sweets on the menu. Learning directly from Naomi rather than trying to do so much uh, so on my own is a much more realistic approach too. And most importantly, I want regulars to taste just how good these are. However, I can't help but remember divine selection when Naomi stares at me in utter amazement. Even if she does teach me, it'll all be for nothing if I get eliminated. Sorry, forget I asked. There's no way I can tell her about the possibility of me dying, but I'm awfully close to doing so. There's definitely a part of me that figures I could lift some of the weight off my shoulders if I told someone about this. Yo, as soon as the music stopped and her face grew super serious, I got goosebumps all over my freaking legs and my arms. Oh my god. I was like, forget about it. Holy... I just... I, 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 I was expecting her to, like, have a different reaction. Why? Her overjoyed expression quickly clouds over as she draws her face close to mine. I must look like I'm mulling something over, so I rush to find a way to respond. I can't keep taking up your time like this. Things can't continue this way forever. That's not what you're really thinking, is it? Huh? Besides, I'm the one who asked you to teach me first. That, well, um... She struggles a bit before continuing. Sorry, I'm just not quite sure how to put this. Don't worry about it. I want us to keep spending time together. Her eyes immediately shoot to the floor, almost as if she let the words fall out by accident. Sorry, something about me has been strange lately. We might be just 
tired. At, you might just be tired after you, I made you do stuff that you're not used to. Want to head home for today? That's that's not it. She takes a small breath, raises her head up, and looks me dead in the eyes. Her expression is almost oppressive. Forgive me for asking you out of the blue, but you could could you hear me out for a moment? Oh my god. Sure. I've been having an awful nightmare a lot lately. A nightmare? It, oh, she knows the train! Because she was involved! Yo, I'm getting goosebumps. This music and the intensity of the situation is mounting. Holy shit! So she's remember. Yes, it always starts out normal, with the two of us getting on a train and chatting away. But then, a fire breaks out all of a sudden. The flames spread throughout the entire train, and the heat alone makes it painful to breathe. But then, you dive in front of me and shield me from the flames, only to be engulfed in them by, in my place. She pauses a number of times while she talks, her voice gradually getting more and more agitated. After that, I can only watch as they kill you. They... She was murdered by somebody. By actual people. Do you remember when you started having this dream? She shakes her head, which has turned to the to face the floor again and then answers. I don't remember exactly, but it might have been ever since I first came here with you. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Sorry, I didn't I don't mean to sound angry, but if coming to me is causing you undue stress, then that's not it at all. I love spending time with you and brewing coffee together. Doing so helps me to understand that it was just a dream, nothing more. It's just that I hate seeing you die in front of my eyes, even in a dream. I never ever want to see that, never. Her voice falters on the fi final word. I can see tears welling up in her eyes, having the same dream over and over. That's... that's not a dream. There's no doubt that what she's saying is the cause of my death. A number of questions pop up in my head, but most of all, I'm flat out shocked. I never would have guessed that she's been having this, a dream like that, based on her attitude, especially with my own memory of the event is fuzzy at best. Don't worry, Naomi. It's okay. I'm right here. There's still so much I, I want to, to do together with you, Rinka. I want to bake cookies. I want to go to the theme park again, so you won't die all of a sudden, will you? I can't force myself to nod in response. After all, I'd already be dead if it wasn't for Divine Selection. What, sh what she's dreaming about actually took place. It's just been undone for the time being. It makes me wonder, when Parka said our deaths would be undone, did she mean that the world's memories of the events themselves have been rewritten? I can't wrap my head around such a thing. how such a thing could even be possible. However, the fact of the matter is Naomi's memory of my death is deeply ingrained in her being that she's reliving it over and over in her dreams. I'd ask about the people. She said they keep killing you. I would be like, who is they? Please answer me. Sorry. Oh no, I didn't want you to apologize. But, well, I do want an answer to my question. As long as you do that, I'm sure I'll be fine, even if I have the same dream again and again. I'm- wait, 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 I don't- I- I don't know if I'm- I can save. I haven't looked, but I'm- I'm gonna overwrite this save just in case there's a choice that could be detrimental. Sorry, but I- I desperately hold my back- self back from saying something I'll regret. I'm far worse at lying than I thought, judging by how I kept apologizing to evade the question. Her head is downcast, her eyes are glancing up at me, the tears in her eyes are a lot more obvious than before. It's my fault that she's been crying. If there's anything on your mind, please talk to me about it. The last thing I want for you is to just disappear someday. She says this with absolute with resolve in her voice, despite her eyes being filled with tears. It just makes my heart ache all the more, though. She's likely to be haunted by that dream for a long time, assuming I keep the truth from her. And yet, telling her won't change the fact that I'm a participant. What's worse, I may even get her caught up in something dangerous if she decides she wants to try and help me out. I can't say for sure how dangerous this whole situation is, but at the very least, I want to be to make sure she never comes into contact with those people from the dream world. Most of all, I'd have to reveal the fact that Miharu is also a participant, and that only one of us will make it through the whole thing alive. Keeping her in the dark would mean I don't burden her with my situation. Actually, there's something I need to tell you, too. 
Huh? This might make you worry even more. In fact, you might not even believe me. That said, will you w listen to what I have to say? Of course. She answers without hesitation. As I'm about to start, the chime on the bell door rings. Sorry, can we stop here until tomorrow? I, do you mind if I wait until you close for the night? I'd hate to keep you waiting that long. Besides, I think it's better if we take a breather. Don't worry, I promise to tell you after school tomorrow. Okay. She nods enthusiastically and then helps put out the table, put the tableware away. She leaves as I get back to work. Meanwhile, I try to focus on my work as much as possible to distract myself from my own uneasiness. God, that's going to be so rough. Oh, we're back at school. Good morning. Good, good morning. Miharu is already here when I get to school. She gives me a usual smile before she continues. She continues. Oh. Rinka. Naomi comes running over to me from the gate. Whoops! Oh no! Now, she almost trips in her haste, but she manages to catch herself. Seems like she's just as clumsy as ever when she lets her guard down. She's been waiting for me at the school gate, just like she said she would yesterday. There's little point in coming and her coming all the way to my classroom anyway, considering it's a big detailer for her. Sorry for the wait. Mind if we go somewhere else to talk? There's a nice place near the Lion House. We're not going to the Lion House then? Nah, the weather's nice today, so might as well be outside. Okay. Following that, we both make our way to the station. The station? Alright, well, things are getting really intense. But we have to end the episode off here. So thank you all for watching. Make sure you click that thumbs up button down below for me. Because you already know your support's greatly appreciated. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments in the uh, comment section to let me know what you think. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you know when new episodes come out. As well as staying tuned to everything on the channel. And we'll see you all next time.